Ten years in the making. This adventure into independent filmmaking began in 1998. When I traveled to the Dominican Republic to interview the survivors of the Trujillo regime. I wanted to let these witnesses tell the story of the Mirabal sisters of the Dominican Republic. Dede Mirabal, the fourth and surviving sister, was critical in the storytelling process. And so were Minu Tavares, Minerva Mirabal's daughter, and Leandro Guzman, Maria Teresa's husband. They all helped bring to life the terror and abuse that reigned during the Trujillo regime and tell the story of the sisters who helped bring down the dictatorship. Much of our shooting took place in Salcedo, where the Mirabal sisters were born and grew up. We also shot in Santo Domingo, the capital city, and Puerto Plata, a city on the other side of the island, where the Mirabal's husbands were imprisoned and where they visited the day of their death. The Mirabal family gave me their photographs to use in the film. However, when I got back home, I realized there were just not enough of them to tell the real story. So in 2003, I set off for Cuba to produce recreations of the key scenes. I'd been to Cuba before to shoot, and so I knew the locations, film crews, and was confident I could produce what I needed. Pre-production was very intense. There were about 10 locations to look into that had to fit the look of the real life places. Everything from the Mirabal family home, homes where the secret activities took place, the jails where both the men and the sisters were imprisoned, a place for the party scene, and the solitary road where the women were ambushed and kidnapped and the sugarcane field where they were assassinated. We were lucky with our wardrobe. Many costumes were provided to us for a modest fee by the Cuban Film School that has a huge warehouse with thousands of costumes. The three sisters' wardrobe was designed by Cuban Elio Vives. I bought the material in the U.S., carted it to Cuba, and he designed the clothes based on what Dede Mirabal told us the sisters really wore. <laughs> People ask me why I shot in Cuba. <laughs> Well, if you look at Cubans and compare them to Dominicans, you can see they look pretty similar. But there were other reasons, apart from being able to produce there with my tiny budget. In Cuba, a lot of things have been frozen in the 50s, when the Cuban Revolution took place. So finding props, for example, from the 50s was pretty easy. A lot of cars in Cuba are from the 50s, but finding cars exactly like the ones in the story was hard work. We did manage to find them. Even the Jeep the women used the day of their death. It took a week to cast the principal actors and over a hundred extras. Finding good actors in Cuba wasn't hard. It was finding good talent that looked like the main characters that made things complicated. Talent for our villain, Trujillo, fortunately, wasn't hard to find. Enrique Almirante had just finished playing the role of Trujillo in an Italian film. He even had the uniforms to go with the part. The five assassins in real life are gentle, funny people. 
and it amazes me even now as I look at footage how they turned on screen into the monsters they needed to be to play the role. Flaco, yo estoy en contra de esto. ¿Qué pasa si te cae? Si me caigo, sigan ustedes. Aquí no. I had a great crew of over 40 people, all top professionals who were creative, hardworking, and a lot of fun. <laughs> Logistics were often nightmarish. The weather was hot. The days were long. Yet most put up with the exhaustion and even kept their sense of humor. The whole sequence of shots of the sisters leaving home to visit their imprisoned husbands took place in Havana's botanical gardens. A great place for its looks, and also because no one else was there during our shoot. Ambush and assassination scenes, of course, were terribly hard on the talent. Hard on the assassins, too. In order to prep them all for the scene, I had them hyperventilate before and then during the takes. It seemed to work. I asked each woman to remember her character, even as she faced death. Minerva strong to the end, Maria Teresa begging for her life, and Fabia hanging on to her rosary beads. Weeks earlier, Cuban composer Frank Vigerano had recreated two 40s era songs for a very important scene in the documentary. Trujillo tries to seduce Minerva Mirabal when she is only 18 years old. It took a whole day to prep over a hundred actors to look like real 1940s Dominican party goers. A rain machine helped us recreate the scene where the Mirabal family escapes Trujillo's wrath. off a cliff was perhaps the most complex scene of all from a technical standpoint. A second jeep had been created identical to the one the women traveled in the day of their death. And we created mannequins so that as the car rolled down the hill it looked like the women's bodies were still inside. The first time we dragged the jeep up the hill, the ropes broke and the car came crashing down before we could shoot. It meant starting all over again. Thankfully, the second time, Cameras were ready and we got the shots we wanted. <laughs> Months of prep work, weeks of pre production, and long days of shooting. The result 23 scenes that helped to bring the Mirabal sisters their courage, their dedication, and their love of freedom back to life.